Well, I, I think um, you know, there's the physical side of it, which, you know, I do the equivalent of, of an ultra marathon every weekend. You know, I do 52 hours um, on the last day, I do 26 and a half miles, the previous day, 22 miles. So just the physical side, you have to be in incredible shape. And I'm in better shape physically today, both my endurance, my muscular strength and so forth than when I was 25, which is wonderful. And so I do certain things for that. But I think I should mention first, what's even more important is the psychological, spiritual side of things, because... Um, I think energy comes first, not from your body. It doesn't come from eating. It doesn't come from sleeping because I've gone without those things for long periods of time and still been able to deliver. It comes from having uh, a mission. It comes from something that you're being pulled by, not something you're pushing on. You know, those are two forms of motivation. You can push yourself to do things and there's only so much you can push yourself to do. But if you're pulled, if there's something that you want to serve that's greater than yourself, there's something that excites you, if there's something that you're about, something you're made for, then there's a level of energy that most people would never dream of. And we all have that, but most of us don't connect to it and unleash it. So every day I connect and unleash that every single day. I don't hope it's going to be there, even though I know it will be, even though it's there. I just, I don't take it for granted. And so I start out with my day by a process I do called priming. And what priming is, it's not a meditation, but it has meditative qualities. And what I do is uh, I sit down. First thing I do in the morning, I go and I jump in a hot tub or a hot water type of experience. And then I go to a freezing water. All my homes, unfortunately, I have to have multiple homes that I go. One of them, I have a river I get to jump in. <laughs> You've been there. Yeah. Uh, there are other places I have these cold plunges. And I do that to train my nervous system to go from zero to 60 like that. You know, every muscle, every nerve in your body, every organ gets, when you hit 57 degree water, it hits. And so it's just my mental discipline. And the second thing I do is I prime. And priming is I sit down and I do a minimum of 10 minutes because my mindset is if you don't have 10 minutes, you don't have a life. Right. So there's no excuse. So every day, sit down. And what do I do? I do three and a half minutes where I do an explosive breathing pattern, a pattern that changes my biochemistry. And after I've done that, 30 of these intense breaths three times, I close my eyes and I'm kind of in an altered state. And I focus first for three and a half minutes on just everything in my life, at least three things that I'm really, truly grateful for. And I don't do that in a hokey way. I don't do it in a mental way. I step into my body and feel it. And I make sure at least one of those things is something really simple. The wind against my skin, um, the look on my son's eyes or daughter's eyes, uh, uh, something that is just very fundamental. But I really, I cultivate that feeling of gratitude, of appreciation for those feelings. And I do it for three and a half minutes. Then I do three and a half minutes where I do this process of focusing on healing, strengthening, and serving. And I, I start in a circle starting with myself, and then I go through all the people in my life and associates, and I just send love to them. Again, it may sound corny, but to me, it's, it's a part of what I'm here for, and it's a part of cultivating that energy, that healing and strength energy, and strengthening my passion, my appreciation, my insights, my, my capacity, my endurance. And then I do the last three minutes are th what I call three to thrive, which is what is it that I really want to make happen? And sometimes I do that over what I'm going to do for the next six months or month. And sometimes it's today. I, I, sh I shake it up. But I'm, I see and feel and own that those things are done. And that starts, you know, pretty much my day between those two items. And, you know, then I have my workouts and things that I do of that nature. I don't think you determine what your purpose is. I think you discover what your purpose is. There's a difference. Determining indicates deciding um, and I don't think you decide I think if you go about it the right way you discover it like there's some people that should be painting all day they're great artists I think Michelangelo was obviously a great artist a great sculptor I mean that was his purpose in his life well I believe my purpose is doing what I'm doing. Your purpose is why you get out of bed in the morning. Do you know why you get up? Well, most people say, well, it's to go to work. Well, that'd be a good reason to stay in bed. You know, you say, well, everybody's doing it. That'd be another reason to stay in bed. If you're ever doing what everybody's doing, you're probably going in the wrong direction. Your purpose is your reason for living. What you want to do is sit down and maybe Take a pen and a pad and then ask yourself, what do I really love doing? Now, you may have to spend a while at this. You might get up an hour early every morning and go sit under a tree somewhere if you're in a nice climate or pick a favorite chair, someplace where you're not going to be disturbed and totally relax and say, if I could spend my life doing something 
What do I really love doing? Now, since you don't ask yourself that question every day, it might take a while for this answer to come to the surface, but it comes to your consciousness. And it may take a while. You may have to do this every morning for three months, but it would be well invested the time. The one thing that discipline definitely does help you with is it, it helps you get things done. And when you get things done, when you, you, you actually do things, you, 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 you have more success. If you have more success, and sometimes a, a big part of success is just not being lazy and just doing it. Yeah. Just get, that's like 90% of it is just showing up. Get there and start working. Like, you're not going to feel perfect every day. If I felt, if I only worked out when I felt good, I'd be a fat, because there's a lot of days I don't want to do it. I mean, it's pretty much the same with everybody that if, that actually gets good at something. You you get there's got to be those days you push through, and they're they're probably going to be more numerous than the days you don't. And so the benefit of discipline in my eyes has always been that through discipline I get things done. I always tell my I always say that I'm like the most lazy disciplined person I know because I don't want to do it. Yeah, but I always do. I have paid attention to my life because I understand that my life, just like your life, is always speaking to you, where you are, in the language, with the people, with the circumstances and experiences that you can understand and interpret if you are willing to see that always life, God, is speaking to you. Now, it took me a while to actually really get this and to understand it, but once I did, I started paying attention to everything. And one of the reasons why I can now accept the fact that I can offer my gatherings of information and wisdom and call myself a spiritual teacher is that every single person who ever came on my show, and I hear there's like 37,000 guests I've talked to, a lot of them came from dysfunction and a lot of them wouldn't appear to be teachers, but every one of them had something to say that was meaningful and valuable and that I could use to grow myself into the best of myself, which is what all of our jobs are. Your number one job is to become more of yourself and to grow yourself into the best of yourself. When I'm with cooler or popular guys, I feel inferior and worthless, which affects me. And weirdly, I try so hard to impress them and be like them like a chameleon. I try to avoid them, but I feel left out. Whatever I do, I feel sad or useless. What can I do in order to overcome this? You don't have to hang out with people you don't like. There's a pro-life tip for everybody. You don't have to. One of the things that is a massive indication that you're hanging out with the wrong group of people is that you don't feel comfortable being yourself. The second you try to be somebody else or you feel like a chameleon just to fit in, you are trying to fit in with the wrong group. Relationships only work when you can be the real you. People thrive on energy. That's what drives connection. You're with people that make you wither and hide and feel insecure. You are with the wrong people. If it's hard to be around people, you're with the wrong group of people. When relationships work, they work because they click. And the reason why they click is because you can be the real you. They don't make you feel inferior. You're making yourself feel inferior by hanging out with people and pretending you're not yourself. So every time you're hanging out with a group of people and you act like a chameleon, you're actually invalidating yourself because your own actions are telling you you're not good enough to just be yourself around these people. So the only way to deal with this is either show up with that group of people and be your full self. And every time you think something inferior, just knock that thought out of your mind, say what you really believe, be interested in what you're really interested in, or the easier route, honestly, drop the popular kids and find your people. You need to find your people. And your people are the kind of people that the second you hang out with them, you don't feel like less of yourself, you feel like more of yourself. You don't feel like you gotta hide or be somebody else. You feel like you wanna express yourself and show up and be more of yourself. That's the indication that you have found your people.